Welcome back to another Micmac Tabletop Review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Smith & Wesson Model 915 9mm semi-automatic pistol. I'm always on the lookout for bargains and guns with a bit of character. Here's a good one. This Smith & Wesson 915 is a standard value series variant of the Smith & Wesson 5900 series. These were basically variation spin-offs of law enforcement guns and the 915 was the less expensive consumer version of the popular Smith & Wesson model 5904. I picked this one up recently at a local gun store for less than $200 out the door so I don't have much in it. The slide finish is fine but these grips are showing their age and this frame anodized black finish is showing wear as well. I've worked on these Smith & Wesson semi-automatic aluminum frame pistols before and sometimes you can get away with a bit of touch-up. Rubberized replacement grips are available for about $30. But as it is, overall, I think it still looks pretty good. The 915 is from the third generation of Smith & Wesson semi-automatic line of 9mm pistols. It's also from the Smith & Wesson low-end value series, so it's sort of a is-what-it-is gun. Basically, Smith & Wesson put less into this series to keep the cost down. Smith & Wesson was upfront about that. Mainly, you were getting what you paid for. A good gun, but no frills and less refined. After a bit of basic cleanup, I think this 915 turned out looking pretty good, given what I paid. I did use a little birchwood aluminum black and birchwood super blue. But after a complete disassembly, I couldn't find anything internally that needed repaired or replaced. Functions seemed good. These, These 915s were only made for about three years during the early 90s, so they can be hard to find. And the model 915 is the last of the high capacity all metal Smith & Wesson semi-automatics produced. Now before we go any further, let's make sure that this gun is clear first. And by the way, if you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. With all the polymer handguns out there today, you might think that people have forgotten about these great old Smith & Wesson metal 9mm pistols. And that'd be sad because Smith & Wesson made some really excellent guns, which are actually still great today. The first of the steel and aluminum in Smith & Wesson 9mm pistols was the double single action 8-shot Smith & Wesson Model 39, which was released in 1955. Here's an example of a Model 39. Nice gun. Keep in mind that the popular guns of the day were the single action 45 1911 and the high capacity Browning high power 9mm. The double single action Model 39 was initially designed to fulfill military requirements, but with the exception of the Naval Special Warfare units during the Vietnam War, the military failed to adopt the Model 39, and so Smith & Wesson offered it to the public. And the Model 39 became the first popular U.S.-made 9mm semi-automatic pistol on the consumer market. Smith & Wesson followed up in 1972 with the release of their double-stacked 9mm 13-round Model 59. Here's an example of a Model 59. By the way, unlike this one, note the 59s would have actually had blued frame. Now at the time, remember that the only double-stacked pistol was the single-action Browning High Power. With the Model 59, Smith & Wesson ushered in a new generation of the Wonder 9s. These were highly popular pistols with law enforcement and the consumer market back in the day. So jumping ahead about three decades from the original Model 39 brings us to this Model 915. The 915's designation comes from it being a 15 round capacity 9mm. 9 Model 915 was only produced between 1992 and 1995. Short run. Because it was the Federal Violent Crimes Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994 which restricted magazine capacity to 10 rounds. That, that caused Smith & Wesson to replace the model 915 9 mm 15 round with the 910 9 mm 10 round pistol. While the third generation Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic should have had four-digit numberings like the 5904, 
The 915 and the 910 were exceptions, but still third generation Smith & Wesson 9mm pistols. There was also a 9 round pistol, the 909. And Smith & Wesson also made compact models, the 908, the stainless steel 908S. Smith & Wesson reduced costs through certain machining operations and part changes. Compared to the full size all stainless steel 5904, this 915 for example is not stainless steel has a left-hand safety decocker only instead of the usual ambidextrous 5904 version as well as a fixed rear sight instead of an adjustable sight. Also a major difference to the value series was in terms of fit and finish. You can tell the difference. Be aware that the 910 which followed the 915 has even more cost-cutting features including elimination of the barrel lug on the 910 which had given the 915 a tighter lockup for better accuracy. The addition of several Plastic parts on the 910 such as the rear sight, recoil guide, and magazine release button. Smith & Wesson even omitted the finishing machine operation on the 910 to further save on manufacturing expenses. As such, many view the 915 as the last of the economical Smith & Wesson all-metal high-capacity pistols and the better choice. As for packaging, this was a used gun and there's no packaging. However, I've seen cardboard boxes for the 915. As I understand, 915s came with only one magazine. As for movie connections, the Smith & Wesson Model 915 has been seen in a few U.S. movies. Here's one. At the end of the 2005 film Harsh Times with Christian Bale, you see a Smith & Wesson 5904 suddenly replace by a Smith & Wesson 915. Probably a continuity error which most moviegoers would probably miss. Probably a more well-known film in which the 915 appears would be the 2001 film Blow with Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz. Specifications of the Smith & Wesson model 915 include that it's a full-size double single action recoil operated 9mm pistol with a double stack 15 round magazine. The 915 is one of the third generation Smith & Wesson variations. It's got a 4 inch barrel, an overall length of 7.5 inches, it's 5.5 inches high, it's 1.37 inches thick at the grips, the slide is just under an inch thick, the frame is anodized black aluminum, the slide is blued carbon steel, the sights include a ramped fixed front sight and a dovetailed fixed rear sight. There's an ambidextrous side-mounted safety decocker here. The magazine is 15 rounds and there's a magazine disconnect safety. The gun comes with only one magazine. There's a side-mounted mag release here. Grips are nylon plastic. Unloaded weight is 28.5 ounces. As for function, this particular model 915 functioned pretty much like my models 39 and 59 as far as I could tell, although not as tight and smooth. It's good, but there is a difference. The 15 round magazine loaded easily enough and fit snugly when inserted. Everything seemed tight enough, no rattles or looseness. Racking the slide is very easy, actually easier than on my models 39 and 59. The slide release Safety decocker, magazine release are all located within reach as they should be. As for the trigger, it's a 14 pound pull on the trigger in double action mode. Just a tiny bit gritty on this one. And in single action mode, there's about a quarter inch take up with about a four pound pull. Reset is only about an eighth of an inch. short and crisp. It's said that the Smith & Wesson improved the trigger with each generation of these pistols and yes I can tell the difference. This 915 trigger is indeed a little better but to be honest my older model 39 and 59 actually feel a tad better in the hand to me and just seem more accurate when compared to this 915 but that may just be me. My trip to the range of this gun was a little disappointing. I set the 6 inch targets out to 25 feet, my typical training distance. The slide failed to return to battery several times. I suspect the recoil spring was worn out. That may be why racking the slide seemed easier than on my Model 39 and 59. 
whatever. My accuracy was okay, but not great with this gun. Now fortunately, I'd also taken my Smith & Wesson Model 59 pistol with me that day, so I could exchange the recoil spring from the 59 to the 915. And the question was, would that help? I set my 6 inch targets at 25 feet, which is my typical training distance. There's a failure of the slide to fully return on several of my first shots. Trigger is okay. Sights are okay. Accuracy is okay. But the gun just seems slightly off to me. As I said, I was able to replace the recoil spring with one from my Model 59 back at 25 feet. The return to battery problem appears to be solved, but my accuracy didn't improve. Maybe it's the grips. Or maybe it's just me. Okay, so replacing the recoil spring will cost me only about $8. Fortunately, Wolf Gun Springs provides quite a range of springs for the 915. However, I should point out that something about these 915 grips, they just don't feel quite right to me. On its own, the 915 is really okay, but to be honest, something about the 915 compared to my models, the 39 and 59, just seems a little off. And I can feel a quality uh, refinement difference. Maybe overall, this particular 915 is a bit more worn than my models 39 and 59. Or maybe it's just all in my head. Probably the main con of the Model 915 is that it's from Smith & Wesson's Value Series, which means it won't be as refined or the finish as durable. Of course, compared to the Smith & Wesson 910, at least the 915 still retains most of the qualities that made the Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatics excellent pistols. The 915 was also only produced for about three years, which would suggest that replacement parts might be more difficult to find. My research suggests that while not horrible, the 915 and 910 displayed somewhat underwhelming accuracy at distances. Also, the typical complaints about these early Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatics still apply, such as it's only a 9mm, or people don't like the grips, or the magazine disconnect, or Crimson Trace laser grips aren't available, or there's no rail for accessories, or the anodized aluminum and alloy frame chips too easily. As I mentioned earlier, the 915 was Smith & Wesson's response to the public's request for a more affordable, high-capacity 9mm handgun. Built around the Smith & Wesson 5904, which was highly popular with law enforcement, the 915 was functionally the same, but basically a no-frills, less refined version of the 5904. The 915 and lower-capacity Smith & Wesson Model 910 were part of Smith & Wesson's value series of pistols. Well, as for pros, okay, I've got to say it. If you wanted a nicer pistol, you should have come up with a few more bucks and gotten a 5904. Personally, I think Smith & Wesson did a pretty good job of meeting the public's need for an affordable but decent high-capacity 9mm semi-automatic pistol. The 915 is basic, but still a Smith & Wesson where it really counts, in my opinion. So function-wise, although from the Smith & Wesson value series, the 915 still appears to be pretty well made, with good quality, well-fitted parts, while at the same time, the 915 can be had for a very good price for what you get. Not bad. Many replacement parts for the 915 are currently still available and reasonably priced. For example, replacement 15-round magazines will cost about $24 each. And I've got to say, the 915 really has that cop gun look, which is pretty cool. One more thing, it's been almost three decades since the last 915 was produced, yet you'll still hear law enforcement officers talk about how they put thousands of rounds and put their duty 915 through a whole lot of abuse, yet the weapon never had a single breakage or malfunction. That's high praise. I should point out that there's a growing renewed interest in all-metal 9mm handguns. Current hot interest firearms like the SIG P10 
8.226 Mark 25 for its reliability. The CZ 75 SP1 is a home defense weapon. The Bursa PTR9 affordable with a good trigger. A Rock Island Armory STK100 also affordable. And even the old venerable Beretta 92FS for its reliability and durability continue to enjoy good market activity today. So while polymer pistols may dominate the options out there, all metal pistols have retained the respect that they rightly deserve. I don't know if there's a connection, but that might explain why the value of these old Smith & Wesson double action all metal 9mm handguns seem to be retained and in many cases are steadily increasing in value. Field stripping the 915 is fairly simple. Clear the gun first, cock the hammer, and remove the magazine. Then move the slide back till the forward end of the slide latch is aligned with the latch cutout on the lower end of the slide. Then push the latch out from the other side and remove. Move the slide assembly forward off the frame while keeping your thumb on the hammer to ease it down. Remove the recoil spring and rod from the slide. Lift the barrel out of the slide and that's it. Reassembly is basically the opposite. Return the barrel to the slide. Return the spring and rod. And then return the slide to the frame. You'll need to depress the ejector and then the sear release lever in order to clear the rear of the slide. Insert the slide release takedown pin and when the slide is in the right position, press into place. Return the magazine and check for function. That's it. As for price, Genitron.com suggests an average use value of $350 today for the Smith & Wesson Model 915. True Gun Value suggests an average value of about $400. Recent actual sales have averaged close to $375. Used trade-in value for the 915 has been about $265. Now in comparison, the first generation Smith & Wesson Model 39 has a used value of about $700 today, while the low-end, no-frills Model 910 has a value of about $325. So, as would be expected, the value series Smith & Wesson pistols continue to be worth less for obvious reasons. But if you find a good third-generation all-metal 915 for sale, what would be a good price? I'd say something around $300 price range would be reasonable. Like new with original box, extra magazines, perhaps a bit more. Again, for what you get, a 915 can really be a great bargain. Now before we end today's video, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. Produced between 1992 and 1995, the Smith & Wesson Model 915 is one of the low-end third-generation value series pistols. This 915 was very popular with law enforcement before Glocks took over. While the 915 was still made with all metal parts, you can tell the difference when compared to the earlier models. Nonetheless, it's a Smith & Wesson and overall the 915, in addition to its acclaim, reliability and durability, is indeed a pretty nice pistol. And importantly, it did effectively fulfill the public's need for an affordable, high caliber 9mm semi-automatic pistol. Well, wrapping up, I was able to pick this 915 up for only a couple of hundred dollars, so I don't have much in it. I had to clean it up a bit and replace a worn recoil spring to get it to function properly, but otherwise, it's really been a pretty nice pistol. Yes, it may not 
compete very well with the earlier, more refined Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatics, but there's little doubt that it's definitely a very good firearm for what it is. And now that I've had the Smith & Wesson 915 for a few months, I've concluded that a whole grip sleeve might be just what this gun needs to improve it for my comfort and accuracy. For only $13, they would be worth a try. Or how about a set of nice wood grips to dress it up? As I said earlier, if I hadn't had the experience with the earlier Model 39 or 59, I may have been more impressed with the 915. I think the Models 39 and 59 may have spoiled me a bit. But I'm going to spend a little time polishing internal contact points, and I ordered a recoil spring calibration pack, about $35, from Wolf Gun Springs, which I'm going to play with to see if I can tune this gun to better fit my needs. New grips and the right springs can make a big difference. I might even get the frame re-anodized. But regardless, there's no denying that the 915 with its oversized controls and classic cop gun looks remains very popular even after the current dominance of polymer pistols. Now overall I do like this classic Smith & Wesson 915. And since the model 915 does represent the last of the economical high capacity Smith & Wesson all metal Wonder 9s, it does have a historical significance that will probably cause me to keep it in my collection. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.